Railjacks have four components to slot in. Their shield array, engines, plating, and reactor. These affect many stats on the Railjack itself, and as a result matter to the whole squad. So let's go over what's best, and how you get it. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. A Railjack is far more than just its components, and I've covered the other areas already in previous videos. If you still need to pick the right turrets, mod your plexus, or decide on the right crew, all three of those guides are in the video description. Railjack components are the base stats of your Railjack, focused on defense, mobility, and buffs to your battle mods. You can access your components menu in the dry dock of your dojo, or higher tier relays. Only the host Railjack components are used for a mission, so if you're never the one hosting, then there's less reason to spend some resources here. Just be aware that if you become the host, you'll be glad you did prepare. The first component is the shield array. As with most Railjack parts, they come in three tiers, and each tier has a basic Sigma version, and then house variants. You get the Sigma series from your clan's dojo, and they should be your go-to pickup until you can get hold of a suitable upgrade. The house variants are Levan, Vidar, and Zetki. I'm not going to talk about the tier 1 and 2 comparisons, because you should just be moving on to tier 3 as soon as possible. They're just better. Within tier 3, Levan offers the highest shield total, and a fast recharge rate, but it has a long recharge delay. Vidar offers a medium shield total, with faster recharge rate, and a medium recharge delay. Zetki then offers a lower shield total, equal to the basic version, as well as a slow recharge rate, but with a minimal recharge delay. While there are these numerical differences, these don't really matter all that much, as shields represent very few effective hit points on the Railjack. Tier 3 shields also each have one random trait assigned from their house options, as I'm showing you now. The Zetki ones can basically be ignored. Zetki shields spend very little time fully depleted, and 10% Tenno shields is practically a rounding error. The Vidar options are not a lot better. Increased turret damage for the next shot is about as close as it gets to pointless, as the majority of your damage is going to be coming from Seeker Volley anyway. Gaining 50 shields per kill is nice, and has absolutely nothing to do with energy, so I don't know why that's in the description. However, this perk doesn't count all kills. It will count the kills from Shatterburst, as well as from Turret Fire, but Seeker Volley doesn't trigger this perk. You know, your main fighter killer method, so that's not too helpful. And besides, 50 shields are roughly equivalent to, well, nothing, so it's a forgettable trait. The third Vidar perk applies an electric proc to all enemies within 50 meters every 10 seconds. Well, that's what it says. The range is actually closer to 250 meters, but it only applies to enemies around the Railjack. It doesn't affect ground enemies at all. 250 meters in Railjack distances is practically punching range, making this virtually useless. You can just fire missiles for fighters, and disable cruise ships with the Blackout Pulse battle mod. Lastly then, Levan offers two options for perks. The first has shields replenish faster whilst cloaked, which is pointless, as if you're cloaked, you're going to fully regenerate your shields anyway. The second option grants shields equal to 10 times the energy spent on battle mods. This acts exactly like the Augur mods, giving shields and overshields to your Railjack just like the Org mods give shields and overshields to your Warframe when you cast abilities. Because it's energy based, this doesn't work for Lavos and Hildrin, because neither of them have any energy to spend. But for everyone else though, a single cast of Seeker Volley will restore over 1000 shields instantly to your Railjack, even with maxed battle mod efficiency. Out of these then, I'd say the best choice would be to grab the Levant Shield with the Energy to Shield perk. There's not much else that distinguishes between the shield options, but the loss of rapid recharging on Levan is made up by the regeneration from using abilities, especially as the only source of overshields. Next up are the engines. In terms of base stats, the Levan offers greater boost, but worse cruising speed. Vidar gives you a lower boost bonus, but increased cruising speed, and Zetki sits in the middle, with a slight boost to both cruising speed and boost bonus. Most Railjack gameplay, you're either sat still, or you're boosting so the only detail we need to worry about is the maximum possible speed. For this, the Levan comes out on top, with or without a modded Plexus. It's about 6% faster than the Vidar, and 12% faster than the Zetki. 
Now all of these engines do come with house specific traits at tier 3, and absolutely all of them can be ignored. Seriously. A couple of them offer you a speed boost when your shields have run out, but that's going to last at most a few seconds because if your railjack is moving, you're mostly going to be dodging shots. The 10% armour reduction on intruders is barely noticeable, and similarly a 20% weapon damage bonus only aboard your railjack is of minimal help. The shield regeneration bonus from Zetki, whilst you're stationary, applies to the recharge rate, but it doesn't apply to the recharge delay. And chances are, if you're stationary, you're either taking near constant hits, which invalidates this ability, or you're not taking enough hits to need to worry about the amount of shield recharging anyway. But the only trait that is of any note at this point is Levan's overshields on Tenno for using the slingshot. Seeing as you'll be picking the Levan engines anyway for the actual railjack speed, it makes sense to go for the option which at least gives something slightly worthwhile, that is, unless you use the Amisha Archwing. Onto the third railjack component, that is the plating. Unlike all the other components, the platings do not have any special traits for tier 3. All they offer are the base stats from the different house options. Levan has the highest base hit points, Vida has the highest armour, and Zetki is once again right in between the two. As the stats work out, Levan has the highest effective hit points, and it also has the fastest effective hit point regeneration through the railjack's passive healing when you're not taking damage. So, very simply, the best plating is the Levan, although any of the house platings beats the Sigma very handily. And then the final Railjack component is the Reactor. Since the Railjack rework, the Reactor primarily affects the casting stats of the Railjack, its strength, duration and range. Each house buffs a specific stat with their Reactors, and the Tier 3 Reactors also come with a secondary stat benefit. Seeing as the Reactor is mostly about the battle mods, it's important to know which ones you should be using. I cannot overstate how effective the combination of Blackout Pulse, Shatterburst and Seeker Volley are as a go-to setup. Nothing beats them. To support those, the Zetki Reactor does an amazing job, giving you strength to get the most out of Shatterburst and Seeker Volley damage, as well as the range to hit the widest area with the Blackout Pulse and Shatterburst. With that extra range, a Shatterburst fired at the entrance to any Grenier point of interest will destroy any radiator without having to reposition your ship. For these reasons, the Zetki Reactor is an easy winner. Stats aside though, the Tier 3s do also come with house perks like with the shields and engines. Once again, these perks are very minor. Levan offers a small bonus to max shields, or a very brief bonus to Tenno damage after slingshot. Vidar offers an increase in vulnerability window after a major breach repair, or a very brief Archwing speed boost. None of these options are game changing and none of them compete with the Zetki reactor. Within House Zetki, all three options are a 50% chance of fixing a type of hazard after 5 seconds. There's not a lot to pick between there, however fire hazards tend to be the most common hazard and pretty much the only hazard in Grenier missions, so that one should be your go-to choice. That said, if you have an engineer NPC crewmate on board, they'll handle any of the hazards themselves, so it's not really a big deal which perk you take. So to bring this all together then, I recommend the Levan Shield with the Energy to Shield perk, the Levan Engines with whatever perk you end up with, Levan Plating, and the Zetki Reactor with the Fire Hazard perk. But those are the components you should be looking to get for your Railjack, and there are many ways you can obtain these components. If you want to get them from Corpus missions, you can run Pluto Proxima's Khufu Envoy, an Orphix mission, for Levan parts on Rotation A, with a 14% drop rate each. Alternatively, you can run Pluto Proxima Exterminate or Volatile for a 7% drop rate, while Defense and Survival offer a 20% drop rate on Rotation A, but only for the engines. The plating and the shields are locked behind Rotation B on Defense and Survival. Levan parts in the Corpus Veil, vale, however, only drop from a single NPC, which is not ideal for farming. As for the Zetki Reactor, that drops from a single NPC very rarely in Pluto Proxima, or you can farm it with a 7% drop rate from Veil Proxima Exterminate and Volatile Missions. A few other drop sources exist, but they are substantially slower in the Corpus missions. If instead you want to farm these parts from Grenier missions, you just pick any Grenier mission in the Veil, and every single piece you need can be obtained from there. Each Levan part drops 6% of the time just for mission completion, while Zetki parts drop commonly enough from one of the NPCs. 
Personally, I find the Grenier missions quicker, simpler, and more railjacky, so they are my go-to farm for these pieces. Let me know in the comments which mission you prefer to run though. And with that, you'll have yourself a fully equipped railjack ready for the new war. I don't know how much we'll need our railjacks for the new war, but I would be very surprised if we didn't use them at all. If you have found this video helpful, or learned something new, make sure to give it a like and subscribe as well to catch more as it goes live. That's all from me for now though, so as always, get parts, prepare for war, and fight well Tenno.